Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I bought a lift on Amazon. What do you get for your money? Is it worth it? Would I buy another? Stay tuned to find out. I bought a new four post lift. I bought it off of Amazon and it was a reputable seller. I did buy it myself, no sponsors or anything like that here. But you know, what do you get when you buy a big piece of equipment, a big expensive piece of equipment from Amazon. Now I will tell you, it was, I think between a hundred and $150 less expensive on a couple other sites for the same brand and model. And we'll get into that in just a minute. The reason I chose to buy it through Amazon was shipping was included. And some of the others it was, some you were gonna find out what the price was at checkout. And on those, it was substantially less expensive initially, but the freight was going to be who knows how much. Um, it's 1,670 pounds, I believe is what the uh, bill of lading they said. Would, Amazon would deliver to my property. Now, the problem with that is they can get a big 53-foot trailer or whatever in here, full semi, but they can only get it to the upper concrete. And you need a forklift to unload this thing. They weren't going to try and lift gate it, and it's way too long for that anyway. So getting my forklift up there is a pain in the butt because it I don't have a smooth approach from the shop to the next chunk of concrete. So it worked better for me just to have them deliver it to the freight terminal and then I could go up there with my trailer and they could set it on the trailer for me. It's only about four miles away so that worked out really well. And I have it on the trailer right outside the door. Lesson learned here, when you buy something, even when it's that heavy, you should really strap it down better than I did. Now, they set it up on the trailer, nice and centered, and all the way up onto the trailer, I threw one strap over it, and as you'll see, that wasn't enough. I ended up pulling off on the side of the highway and sucking it back as far as I could with the wench, and, you know, it didn't take a long time, but it was kind of scary because I could have lost the whole damn thing the way I, the way I strapped it down was just stupid. So, that said... That's why it's going to look weird sitting on the trailer and we'll get it backed in here and see what you get for the price on Amazon and we'll go over all the numbers, we'll go over the brand and why I picked one I picked and all that in just a few minutes. So stay tuned. <laughs> So as you can see, it's way off to one side of the trailer and it's not near the front anymore. It was uh, probably only about six inches off this little rack at the front of the trailer. It slid sideways and off the trailer about two feet. So I pulled off, hooked the winch cable on it, sucked it back up on here and then threw that strap over it a different way to keep it from sliding further back. I did a poor job of strapping it down, so don't don't be dummy like me. All right, so what I got for my money was uh, thirty nine hundred and ten dollars. That includes the shipping and took. Uh, they quoted five to six days. It took like three and a half day, three days till it was at the sh at the freight yard, and then that that hit there on a Friday afternoon, and I called on Monday and went and picked it up. So. I guess it did take about six days to get to me, but had I been paying attention, I probably could have gone and gotten it Friday. So what I've got is a Triumph brand, part number NSS8TL. It's an 8,000 pound lift. The one I bought is longer, wider, and taller than your standard lifts. And this one says it's 190 inches long, 112 inches wide, 94 inches tall. So we're setting up the lift behind and to the side of the camera over here where Dustin's Mustang has been sitting on the jig covered up for quite a long time. That should be going on top of the lift. I'm hoping I can put the Scout or some other project underneath the lift so that I can move stuff around. Potentially even just my welding table, being able to put it underneath there and bring it back out would give me some extra room and floor space when I'm wanting to work on stuff. Put the scout out here where I can work on it, slide the welding table underneath, and then when you need to swap it, you can. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm trying to gain a little bit of floor space back. I know it's a big shop for most people, but you still run out of space pretty regularly. I, I 
back to the truck all the way in just so we could see and the door's not open causing lighting issues with the camera but we'll be pulling this back out hook up the uh, forklift to the back of it lift it off the trailer get the truck and trailer out of the way completely and then we'll start the assembly process so stay tuned for that It's uh, one hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes of work, to, uh, and that included getting it off the trailer. So hour and 15 minutes, I got it off the trailer. Of course, I used the forklift, and then uh, got it kind of all unpackaged. These posts stood up, and the uh, cross beams in. And it does matter where you, the cross beams are in pairs, so the on these, the ratchets are on the outside. That's what this lever lock is here that I was using the vice grips to hold out of the way and the same so I actually when I first took them out I had to swap these two posts to get it lined up only one post has a bracket on the back side it's that one over there that has the uh, mount for the pump two guys could do this with a couple step ladders like I said this is the extra tall one it's just about all I can do to lift this cross beam with all the hardware on it put some hydraulic fluid in here but figured I'd give you a little running commentary on what had happened. I got most of the unit put together yesterday. I was working on it yesterday for about two hours and then I got to the point where I was kind of ready to start hooking up cables and, and uh, the control rods and I realized that I had put this runner or whatever you call it on that side over there and that one over here and there is a flange on the inside of these where the tool trays can lay, the drip trays rather, uh, a jack tray, all those things can lay on that lip. And so I had those in the right place, but I had the two runners, essentially they need to be turned around 180 degrees and switch sides. The instructions don't tell you that. You're just kind of guessing. And you know, in hindsight, I should have, probably caught it based on the length of the hydraulic hose that comes with this. There was no way it was going over there. Although the instructions talk about on your dual cylinders, blah, 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 this unit only has one cylinder and it's only under this one rail. It kind of frustrated me. And I stared at it and thought, well, I could do this, I could do that, trying to figure out how I could avoid having to take two hours worth of work apart and redo it. Couldn't figure out a way. So it came down to just turn off the camera, 
take the, everything apart. Now, as far as what I mean by everything is I had to take these four bigger bolts out on each end, two on each end rather, and unhook the rails, pick them up, move them, get one out of the way completely, spin them around 180 degrees, bolt them back in, and then hook up the cables again. And so I got all that done. I went ahead and hooked up the hydraulic hose and now we're filling it. But I worked on it for about four hours yesterday, only getting about two hours worth of work done. Today I've been on it for about 15 minutes, just tightening the fittings on the hydraulic hoses. These instructions are terrible. They'll show you pictures of pieces and parts that you're supposed to install, but they're not the same parts that came with the actual lift. So like the control rods, these are very adjustable. What they show you in the pictures would be a completely non-adjustable version. So there's nothing wrong with what they sent us, but they're not the same. So you're trying to read the instructions which are written in a very poorly translated, uh, you know, probably Chinese to English. And then the pictures don't match either. And I think we figured an hour and 15 minutes on day one that I played with this two hours yesterday of actual work. But the big thing is the ramp or the runner with the cables and the hydraulics on the underside needs to be closest to the pump. Why did I buy Triumph? Why, why pick that brand? There's quite a few brands for sale on Amazon. Some of them are even a little bit cheaper. Full disclosure here, I own another one of these and I bought it about two years ago. And the reason I, at that time, they were all within about a hundred and to hundred and fifty dollars of each other in price, and this one is gray. Everybody else's was black, you know, of the of the least exp lesser expensive brands. You know, if you go to Ben Pack or something, a you're getting probably substantially more quality. I don't know. I haven't used one personally. I've seen them. They look to be good quality, but they're blue. You know, I don't have a problem with blue. I mean, my Two posts look back there with blue. But really when I picked the first Triumph brand, exact same lift, I picked it because it was gray and it was within, like I said, $100, $150 of everybody else's that was black. And I just, I liked the color better. That was it. So when I decided I was ready for a second lift, I wanted the same one. I had already put one together. I knew it went together very well. Uh, on that one, the instructions were Better, hard to believe, but better. Because I'd never put one together at that point. And I knew, I mean, I just read the instructions and boom, 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 did it. So on this one, I got the instructions out. I started reading, it made sense. You know, the English wasn't terribly good, but there were a lot of details missing. Like, do does one ramp on one side or the other matter? Do, or one, whatever, bridge, driveway, whatever you're driving on. Uh, does it matter which side it's on? I don't know, just, just a few things. Like it doesn't tell you that the columns are in pairs, so it would be very easy to put them together wrong because the you need the, the locks to be on the side where there's cleats, which makes total sense when you look at it. But the instructions should pretty well tell you that so that somebody who's never put one together knows what they're looking at. I couldn't even find in the instructions how, what kind of hydraulic fluid to use. now. This is a jug left over from the other one, and the other one works just fine. So, now granted, it's gone up and down about four times in its life because it, it's really just got cars parked on it that belong to my kids, and I don't expect them to come and get them anytime soon. And one nice thing about these Triumphs and, and many of the other brands, and a lot of them are exactly the same lift, they're just a different color. I say exactly the same lift, it's not like I've seen them, but in person, but. You look at the features and stuff, they're, they're just black. So somebody else is ordering them in and calling them a different brand. Uh, the nice thing with a lot, a lot of them are 220. This, the Triumph brand for sure, the pumps are 110. Now it does tell you to make sure you have a full 15 amps at the motor. Don't, don't try and run it off a really thin extension cord and burn up your, burn up your hydraulic pump because these pumps are not terribly cheap. I mean, they're not the worst, most expensive thing you'll spend money on in your life, but why would you ever want to replace one if you didn't have to? Now, this tank has on here 
a 12L, so I'm assuming that means it's 12 liter. You know, it doesn't tell you that it's, you know, quantity or anything. It just it says V110, KW2.5, ML slash R1.6, MPA16, tank 12L, mounting V. So I'm taking it as 110 volts, 2.5 kilowatts. I don't know what ML slash R, like milliliters per, I don't know, it's 1.6. Again, anyway, 12 liters is what I'm guessing this tank is supposed to hold. So that would be about uh, three gallons. Hopefully have enough we can purge the air out of the system and then get the cables tensioned properly so that it all comes up even. And we'll put the wheel kit together and get it in place. But... thing up and down a little bit. I added all the hydraulic uh, fluid I had, which was just under two gallons. Anytime I have new cylinder, hydraulic cylinders or hoses and all that, I like to put in a little bit of this Lucas booster. It supposedly does stop leak as well, but I found that it helps keep the, the motor, or not the motor so much, but the pump alive a lot longer as well as the cylinders and stuff. Just Maybe it's, maybe I'm fooling myself, but I've had good luck with it, so I'm gonna keep using it. In the meantime, what I wanna do is run this up and down a little bit, and what we're listening for is that all of the locks hit at basically the same time. If we're hearing one that's catching a little later, we'll go adjust that cable. And right now I have them all about the same adjustment uh, out of the cap. So if the cables are the right length, this should be pretty close. If they are uh, off any, we'll just adjust them and then we'll tighten up those uh, lock nuts, jam nuts on top. <laughs> so I'm gonna let it all the way down and we'll try running it, one more, running it up again. Just seeing if that changes anything. Had to adjust the rods underneath here that this is hooked to, and they don't make it real easy. There's not a left and a right hand thread, so you can hit an adjuster and just adjust. There is uh, everything is right hand threads, and so when you're tightening one side, you're loosening the other. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm just going to bring it up to where I can use the locks as a like a visual guide and then adjust the rails to get all of them the same. See, that one's already touching. I'm just using that one as my reference because you got to start somewhere. So if that one is the reference, then this one is, is too high. Well, that's it for the assembly, the adjustment. I believe it all is going to work properly now. Probably need to add a little bit more fluid to this tank, so I'll have to run to town and get some. But we're 40-ish minutes into it today. So day one, hour and 15. Day two, two hours. And uh, today, 40 minutes. So that's just right at four hours. And two guys would do it a little faster because I'm having to use the forklift. I got to get on and off. And you saw I've got my uh, truck jack back there so I could go up and down. I can tell you, if you can manhandle it, the best way to do this would be to put these rails in and lock them in at the top. I had to put them in anyway. I could have left them there. But lock them in at the top. And then when you put, the, put these big bridges, whatever we're calling them, on the, uh, you'd have to put them up there up high, but then you'd be able to reach all of the cables and everything would be all overhead. Um, and I could have done it. I mean, I could have gotten them on there, but it would have 
just been a pain in the butt, even with the forklift to do it by myself. For me, it was easier to lower the rails all the way down. And then I found that if I put a two by four on top of a flat two by four to give me about not quite six inches, five inches, I could get my floor jack under the center of the rail and then I could jack, the, jack them up enough that I could play with it and get the height right to line up with these rails or with the runners, bridges, whatever. I keep calling them different things. Uh, I had these on some of these uh, Harbor Freight dollies and that worked really well. We're gonna put the wheels on and I'll kind of show that. I'll just let that run and fast forward again. And then we're gonna get everything moved around over there so that we can put this in that corner and then hopefully put the Mustang up on there. One of the things I'm concerned with is the Mustang is on a cart that has, has uh, free castering wheels, so they, they don't go straight. Um, and I've never made any locks or anything to straighten to where I could lock those in straight. So it may be a challenge to get it up on this lift and keep it on it where it's not trying to roll off one direction or the other. assembly and basic use. Like you can see I tied down the, the uh, cart there because I didn't want to get something bumping into this. You know, I'm running around here with car, moving cars and forklifts and get that thing vibrating and to where it rolls off and kills somebody. So got it tied down. I only have three straps so I'll stop at Harbor Freight in the near future and get a fourth strap. And then This is the kind of thing I expect to use it for is these long-term projects that aren't moving quickly to where I'm working on them all the time and they need to just have some place to safely sit. It clears everything. I got a little bit of the tube, uh, square tubing up there that's touching on the car cover. It's not gonna hurt anything, but uh, I can slide that back and then that won't be an issue either. That's where I wanted this. I gotta get a few tools that I have sitting up there on there off. Um, and what do I think? Well. First, I, I do own a second one of these that I bought like two years ago and I went for this brand because I was very happy with what I got on the other one. And I went and looked, the instructions are different. This um, honestly is a cheaper, lower quality version of what I got. And I paid maybe $100 more for this one because the price has been going up. When I first started looking, they were under 3,000 now they're barely under 4,000. The linkage, all this stuff is the same as my other ones, so that kind of helped as far as I knew how I was gonna have to set it up. The uh, cables and hydraulics are very similar. The fittings that they sent for this one are really too short. Um, they send you an L fitting and some other stuff, and all of the fittings on the hoses, they're uh, JIC fittings, they're really chunky, like they're, they're, they're not smooth spinning like say an A&N would be or a good quality JIC fitting would be. Uh, the ramps are identical. I did buy aluminum ramps for both because I didn't want to haul around the steel neck ramps. Um, it does, both of them have the jacking tray. And this is just so you can use your own jack. The other one actually fits better. This one's really about, you know, more like, uh, this one's about two inches narrower than it, than it could be. So it doesn't fit very well. Um, and it won't sit down on these lips. It, it does have to sit up on the main, the main surface here where, like where your tires would be. Uh, what else? The powder coat on the gray part I think is, is very good. Yeah, it's had a little abuse around here as well as you know in trucking and it's, it's held up pretty well. The power code on all the black stuff is not as good a quality, um, especially on the wheels, the extensions for the wheels for the casters. That is, I mean, I don't even think it's powder coat. It's probably just paint. So I, I'm not impressed there. It's going to work just fine. It's just, the other one just had a little higher quality. Um, so whoever they got making them now, they figured out a way to save, you know, a dollar here and a dollar there to the point of, it's not 
quite as good, but it's completely functional. So that's it. Um, would I recommend it? I would definitely recommend buying the old Triumph. This one, if you're not going to be using it for service work, like I'm not, it's just parking a vehicle, and you're going to stay within the 8,000 pound load limit, which even my diesel pickup would be fine on here. I, I think it's fine. And it's, like I said, it's plenty long. That was my big thing is it's, it's the extra tall and the extra long. I wanted all this space so that I could put these carts up here. I could put, you know, a full Mustang on the body cart. I could put my truck on it. Now my truck probably couldn't be back this far. I'd probably need to either move the lift out or expect the wheels to be all the way to the front. Uh, that's another little thing you might have seen me put these plates in and they just sit inside this gap which is the same gap that the that the uh, ramps click over into and it's fine that's just a tire stop is to keep you you put them in whichever end you don't want to roll off of and you keeps the car or truck from rolling too far forward on the other lift the holes that are like right here it bolts to it so you pick which end is going to have the ramps and which end is going to have the tire stops and you bolt it all in. I liked that because it was very durable, very sturdy. The neat thing about this, you know, taking it, giving it some credit here is I centered it up pretty well on that door. So in theory, you would, there's the same kind of thing on the other end down there. You just take the ramps to the other end and you could roll this right out that other door. So you could use it as a drive through type situation if your shop is set up for that or if you had this sitting outside or whatever. I'll put a link in the description below. Oh, I did add, I, I, you probably saw me using it, I added a winch up here on the front. Now that's just a thousand pound, 110 volt Badlands from, from Harbor Freight winch. I'll put a link in there if I can figure out how. And I went down to our local Big R, which is like a tractor supply and uh, got some U-bolts that are the, the square ones. They were three and a half inch on center and they needed to be at least five inches long. long. That gives me a very nice way to get something that I can't push by myself up onto the lift. And then even with the casters, everything is wide enough that as long as I took my time, it was real easy to get it up on here. And then, like I said, just strapping it down so it can't, can't get knocked around or anything and move. Hey, well, that's it for today. Seen me use it, some additions here. I'll try and find you, if I can't find the Harbor Freight winch, I'll try and find something similar on uh, Amazon. I will admit, I will not have ever used it, but hopefully it'll be close enough. So as you guys can see, not only was I able to put the Mustang up on top, but I've been able to store quite a bit of stuff under here. And for now, that's, that's great. Takes up, you know, gives me floor space back, which was my end goal. And the forklift fits, fits under there, pretty nicely. I can sit in the seat and it just misses my head. So I don't even have to worry about bumping my head. Obviously the fork uprights won't come under cause they're too tall. It gives me uh, a nice place to store some of the tools. So I think that's it for it. I'm going to end the video here. want to thank you all for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, all the other YouTube stuff. And I'll see you again on another Alice Kessler's Project Car TV.